uh, everybody is good and there we got the team preview. On Pontus' side, this team looks uh, like a really familiar team. It's got Tapu Phoenix, Xerneas, Groudon, Incineroar, Salamence and Cartana. And on Nemanja's side, we got a really fancy team featuring a Celesteela, Axelgor, Kyogre, Greninja, Rayquaza and Serena. Where to start, honestly? I mean, this is... <laughs> Obviously, we're going to start on Nemanja's side. That's a, that's a given. Um, Excelgor, right? I've not seen that one in a while. Um, it, it's one of the strangest little Pokemon yeah. uh, that I've seen played uh, in so, so long. One of its uh, most kind of, I don't want to say famous or well-known choices would be the uh, Final Gambit, uh, yeah. which is essentially a trading itself for another Pokemon. When used correctly, it takes all of its health down, and then you do that much health and damage to your opponent. So, assuming your Excelgor has a higher health number than whatever you're trying to attack yeah. you will always be able to remove it from play and it's a it's a really big one for one trade so what a lot of people will do with that is consider that one for one trade with a restricted if possible yeah and then it's super worth it because in the end of the game you reach an end game status where you've got two restricted of your own while your opponent only has one restricted and that should give you a little more breathing room a little more space to kind of be flexible uh, in how you play uh, that's only Excel goal. We've also got Greninja to worry about yeah. uh, with its protein ability. Uh, basically able to shore up weaknesses. Um, and it'll be interesting to see exactly which ones he's decided to kind of put on there. You've only got four move slots. You know, you can't cover every single weakness in a team. So I'll be curious to see if he's able to capitalize on one of those as soon as we get into the battle. And speaking about getting into the battle, I guess the players already locked their Pokemon and sent them out. And Pontus brought Tapu Fini and Salamence, bringing out the Intimidate. And Nemanja is leading with Rayquaza and Greninja. And this is where the party starts, I guess. Yeah, this is an interesting one because many, many Greninja that we've seen over the years always carry one of those Ice-type moves. So the Ice-type move is going to put a whole lot of pressure down on this Salamence. But the biggest concern is what on this side answers Tapu Fini? Or is Tapu Fini just going to be allowed to play the game as it wants? At the moment, I don't see a clear and concise answer to defeating Tapu Fini. So will it be able to set something up? Will it be able to, to play around that? I think that's really the big thing here. Uh, just getting a sense of what type of Tapu Fini we've got. Most of them are taking a more supportive role now. If you wanted to go offensive, you've probably looked to a Tapu Lele. Yeah. But, you know, even if you've got one offensive move slot, what can you do with it? Is it important? Is it going to be something like Muddy Water to lower accuracy? And that's also one of the options. But yeah. we'll see exactly uh, what Pontus decides to do and if Nemanja has a way to wiggle out of it. Are we going to see that? Uh, Pontus stays in with both, both his Pokemon. Salamence is going for the Mega Evolution, getting its Aerial Light ability, which uh, lets it uh, transfer, transform normal type moves into flying type moves. And we see the Mega Evolution on Nemanja's side as well. Rayquaza also stays in going for the Mega Evolution. And let's have a look. We got the Delta Stream ability, which is a really nice ability. Uh, it weakens the flying weakness to. Uh, Electric type attacks to rock type attacks, and Greninja goes for the grass knot into the top of him, not doing Ew, that's, uh, barely doing damage at all. Yeah, that's a very interesting choice to uh, basically decide to uh, take the grass knot there. Rayquaza, though, is going to follow up with a dragon ascent. You'd like to see where that one's going. Um, I'm curious with the double into the Tapu Fini, maybe he knows the calculation. Oh, he needed yeah. a bit more, but grass knot did not provide it there. Um, as Tapu Fini's Icy Wind is going to be doing a lot of damage now. Yeah, Dragon and low is your special defense. And this Rayquaza will take not that much of damage. Well, with the, with the uh, winds in play, yeah. it's certainly a little bit better. But the big thing here, though, that Rayquaza has now had its speed lowered. It lowered its defense and special defense first. Yeah. That Salamence just set up a Tailwind in turn one. So all that damage is from one Pokemon which remained on the field. Now Pontus is going to be moving first with both Tapu Fini and Salamence. Yeah. And he should realistically be able to start, you know, picking some of these things off. This is this is where offensive teams get problems. Once you, you start having to rely on Protect, like this Greninja obviously does and the Rekwaza obviously does, you have to have, like, really good switch-ins that covers uh, flying types of text. We know that uh, Nemanja Gosalis Tila in the back, this is where it might come in. Now we see the Kyogre switching in. Yeah, the Kyogre coming in is interesting. Um, it's a like-for-like -like trade on the weather, obviously. Um, changing the winds out for the, the rain. 
Obviously, we're going to have to wait to see Kyogre Primal Revert. Oh, not at this. Oh, with this one, but... This is not a Primal Kyogre. I'm like... Okay, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. As uh, Greninja <laughs> just decides to protect, uh, Salamence does start throwing down the double edges, um, and Tabu Fini following up the Icy Wind. So even though the Kyogre's come in, uh, it is going to be lowered in speed. Please, Sebi, enlighten me on this Kyogre. <laughs> Well, you do not have to go for Primal Kyogre. Instead of the Blue Orb, you can go for any other item as well, right? For example, Choice Spax, Choice Scarf, stuff like that, even uh, some berries. But I, if you look at the team, this might be a Choice Spax or Choice Scarf Kyogre to dish a huge amount of damage. Uh, either that, that or just to move faster than the other Pokemon. But again, we still got Tailwind on Pontus' side and a uh, nice wind into the Kyogre. And now this is when Emania starts switching to uh, better up his board position. And we see Serena coming in on Emania's side. And Salamence straight goes for the double edge into the Serena slot and activates the Focus Sash. Yeah, the Serena sticking around makes it an okay switch. Might just fall down to the Icy Wind, but I think is trying to get around some of those really nasty uh, Tailwind turns. Uh, Kyogre is going to take a Nature's Madness uh, for its trouble, uh, so I really hope it was trying, of course, to hit something not based off its health. Origin Pulse is the attempt. Uh, will not hit Tapu Fini, so it would have probably got a knockout there and just catch Salamence with a not very effective hit. So not a bad turn, considering you're playing uh, under Tailwind. Yeah. Um, but that Kyogre... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> In all the things I've watched so far, it's always just been, all right, well, I've got access to the blue orb now. Time yeah. to give it the blue orb. And it came in and didn't didn't prime or revert. I thought, so, oh, <laughs> he's broken it. Has he, has he forgotten his item? No, uh, so we'll see what he can do. <laughs> People remember the good old Sun and Moon series where Scarf Kyogre was all over the place. And Zarina is going for a helping hand into Kyogre. But Kyogre cannot make use of it because it's going down to a double edge from Salamence and Tapu Fini taking out the Serena with an Icy Wind. So uh, Nemanja is already down to two Pokemon. But Tailwind is over. Tapu Fini and Salamence on Pontus' side on the field. But there's still two Pokemon in the back and uh, Pontus hasn't even yet used his restricted Pokemon. Yeah, and I mean, I think for Nemanja here, if you can get a piece of information about the rest of Pontus' team, it could be worth keep to keep playing. But at the moment, you know, he's basically played three turns in a Tailwind. He's not been able to fight back against the Tailwind. Um, so it's been a bit difficult for him. Uh, Delta Stream will set up set, set up those mysterious strong winds. Um, and the one thing I'm interested in, I want to go back all the way to turn one on this one, is Greninjas often have access to an Ice-type move. Yeah. And so they can use that to take out something like Salamence. Yeah. It's interesting to me that Nemanja led it next to the Rayquaza, then decided to set up a Delta Stream which kind of took that option off the board for him. Yeah. So maybe in game two, you know, the biggest problem here was the Salamence setting up those Tailwinds, or the one Tailwind. So I'd be curious to see, as he does reveal the Ice-type attack in Ice Beam... He actually does he, take he out his Salamence. And uh, I think the position is slightly getting better for Nemanja because he's taking out the Tapu Fini as well uh, with a Dragon Ascent from, yeah. from Mega Rayquaza. So we are down to two Pokemon versus two Pokemon, and a Greninja is always threatening. You never know is which moves are on it. It might yeah. have like something like Gunk Shot. We already saw Ice Beam and Grass Nut, so there's one move left. The one thing that's interesting to me, though, is you know the, the options that Rayquaza gets and is limited to uh, when you're facing down these fairy types, you have to drag an Ascent. And the big thing here, really, for Nemanja is hey, I'm in the back, I want to come in and, and pick up that knockout in the middle of the game as we kind of rotate through those phases. Um, but up against these restricted, you want to be holding on to those stats as much as possible. And yeah. I think it would be galling to find out that the difference between taking an attack and not is going to be something like the uh, the Dragon Ascent and the drop to its defenses afterwards. So be curious to see how that one plays out. That said, he is, of course, currently not fighting in a Tailwind. He has does have two very, very fast Pokemon on the field. Yeah. And it's up to him to, to try and be able to deal with that um, and see what he can do in that situation. Uh, Groudon's going to be a little bit difficult to deal with right now. Um, but, you know, honestly, with a Greninja, you never know <laughs> what type of moves that it's got that can catch something on a very strange typing. You never know, but, but uh, Nemanja has to get if uh, Pontus is going to protect his Xerneas. Obviously, when Xerneas is getting up those uh, fancy Geomancy boosts, 
then it's all over. So Pontus might make use of that, going for a protect, if Nemanja gets it right and doubles into the crowd on him this turn. This, this is where the guessing starts. This game isn't over yet, and both players have to make the right decision to get out as a winner. Yeah, but I think a lot of the decision uh, kind of falls, in my opinion, on Nemanja's side. You're the one with the offensive pressure. You're the one with the threats. Uh, so you're the one that has to make uh, best use of this. You see Grass not uh, connecting there with the Xerneas. Uh, does a little under half health, uh, but the Xerneas will move before anything on Nemanja's side can follow up. And he's just going to seal the game there with a dazzling gleam. Uh, Rayquaza will go down as well as that Greninja. Uh, and Pontus taking game one in a pretty commanding fashion. Oh yeah, and interestingly enough, we've just seen that Xerneas was faster than the Rayquaza. So this is something uh, Nemanja has to be aware of, not taking too much damage to get picked up by those dazzling gleams, those moon blasts. This is where the he might even uh, plan on, on a different game plan. Uh, we've seen Pontus's Tapofini is like really tough to get by from the Mania. The grass not the damage was not, like really underwhelming. Yeah. It was it was an interesting one, you know. Obviously it does take the grass typing with protein as it changes. Yeah. But you still didn't do any damage. But, you know, because it is based off weight. Tapufini not a notoriously heavy Pokemon. Um, I was definitely curious to see see that calculation and you know, now Nemanja knows that, will he mix up his game plan? You'd hope so, right? But Pontus also knows yeah. kind of what he's been trying. He knows that that offensive pivot comes through in the form of Greninja and yeah. Rayquaza. So I'm going to be curious to see what changes uh, Nemanja believes he needs to be making. Uh, and then, of course, in response, what changes Pontus either makes from a team selection point of view or from a play style point of view? Because I didn't really feel like he was asked many questions. Yeah. Well, I, I really liked the first turn Pontus was doing, like going for a safe speed control. Uh, he knew one Pokemon might go down to uh, the strong attacking Pokemon by Nemanja, and he went for Icy Wind and Tailwind, just to make sure that uh, Kyogre and Rayquaza are not that fast and he can clear up later on. Uh, the Greninja uh, was... Uh, he brought himself in a really good position, to be honest. Like, I really like that play. The, the guarantee that you yeah. get some form of speed control is so, so good. Um, and honestly, if you hit both, then you're just in an even better position. Because yeah. if, by some strange way of playing it out, they could get through the Tailwind, then they've still got weakened Pokemon on the field. Yeah. Or, you know, it just makes things so much easier. I mean, there's some Pokemon that are designed to still outspeed in Tailwind. Uh, so we're going to be, you know, seeing if those can do anything. Uh, that said, <laughs> changes for this lead. Look at this fantastic board. Uh, Pontus led up with Xerneas and Incineroar, and Nemanja on the other side uh, led with Axelgore and Greninja, and this is, like, really interesting. Uh, Pontus got a really straightforward game plan over here. He can make use of Faker from Incineroar and set up a Geomancy, and Nemanja got, like, really too straight up offensive Pokemon, being able to take out those Pokemon in one hit. But uh, is he able to avoid the Geomancy? This is what I'm what I'm figuring out at the moment. So it's an interesting one. Obviously, one of these Pokemon is going to get faked out. Um, if you're Pontus, you have to know which is the biggest threat. Um, and I think it's honestly still something he's going to have to try and figure out. Yeah. Uh, Excelgore and Greninja, both well, able to carry moves to threaten uh, the Xerneas. We will see Xelgor taking the fake out. So that would have moved first. Um, as I guess we're already seeing one of the key things. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be a Z move from Greninja. And uh, this is going to be an interesting one because you can now see that Greninja is uh, changing its type to an ice type. And Sub Zero Slammer is going to do a huge amount of damage. And I bet he's going to aim at the Xerneas. Let's see if it's going to be enough. It's a bulky one, as we can see. No. Still plenty of HP yeah. left. And Xerneas just answers with a Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, no. <laughs> no Geomancy there. So I'm going to say the man you got let off a little bit lightly there. Um, you know, he wasn't put in a position where, you know, he couldn't Geomancy. The Sub Zero yeah. was used to try and bring him down. Um, but, you know, he's gone for the Dazzling Gleam. He's not got the knockouts. Um, and I think Mania is probably in a, a pretty solid position here. As long as Greninja can start dealing damage to Incineroar and Excelgor can find a way to pick up this Xerneas, 
This I, is, I think it'd be good. This is really interesting, though. Like, Pontus was in a really safe place, and the game might have been over if, if he just straight up went for the Geomancy. Maybe he wanted to make sure that uh, to, to cover, like, uh, Rayquaza switch ins to not get picked up by an um, extreme speed. And the next turn, this might have been uh, one thing he went for. But now we're gonna see a oh. Encore into Incineroar. Show us Fake Out one more time. Yeah, Exalgo has completely neutralized uh, the threat of that Incineroar. Uh, with the Encore Greninja's Grass Knot though, free to hit this Xerneas. And we didn't see how much damage it did in the last game, so that's a knockout right there. And Nemanja uh, immediately seizing control of this game as Incineroar tries to fake out once more, but it can't. You can only do that on your first turn in battle. And this is going to be interesting. Now Pontus has to send something in that is uh, going to take care of Greninja and Axagor, but on the other hand, he has to switch out Incineroar the next turn. So I guess we are going to, we see, we do see Groudon, and this is where things are <laughs> really interesting. It's a primal Groudon this time, um, Adam. Uh, now Nemanja is in a really cool situation where he can, he got the control to switch in or not to switch in Rayquaza. Yeah, that's, that's really good for him actually, you know. Groudon is obviously the one you want to save, so you have complete control of that weather with Desolate Land. But, when you do that, you have to show it a little bit early. And as you say, that gives Nemanja the option. When will I bring in my Rayquaza? And you can see how he can play it. Incineroar is no threat right now, but of course Groudon does pose a similar kind of threat. Um, in its typing, you know, that yep. ground fire typing is a problem. And Rayquaza will be entering the field. Uh, so trying to get a little bit of control back uh, while also m maintaining a good momentum. And we do see the Hydra Pump from, from Greninja into the Groudon slot. And Groudon is not protecting. This is going to be it for Groudon. Short stay on the field. Yeah, that actually reminds me of the old... Uh, Switch and Rayquaza use Hidden Power Water Play. <laughs> uh, but he's done it a little bit differently. He's gone with a Hydro Pump. Uh, the oh. big thing here is that Incineroar didn't leave. I was about to mention it, and uh, now I get to see it use its Z-Move, uh, which it can, of course, uh, use to break uh, the Encore. And he's going to take out that Greninja with its uh, signature C move. I really do love that one. Look at it. Uh, but this is, like, uh, really interesting. Greninja goes down and Incineroar is still on the field uh, and still on court. It only used its, uh, uh, it can only use its scene once. Yeah. Now it has to go for fake out again, which is uh, a really good position for Nemanja now. Let's have a look what uh, Pontus and Nemanja are going to send in. But I guess we are in the final <sighs> turns of this match. Yeah, and I mean, whatever comes in is going to have to deal with the Rayquaza. Yeah, uh, that's not too easy. Groudon is one of the more popular ones. But, you know, once Airlock's in play, uh, then you are going to be able to just deal with something like the Groudon with the Greninja. And honestly, that's a perfectly fine train if you're Nemanja. You know, you've got... Your Greninja's gone down. Okay, fair. But it's also taken out two restricted Pokemon. So overall, yeah. that's great value when it comes to being able to maintain that board control. And with these offensive teams, you always need to be trading a little bit better than yeah. your opponent. Yeah, and this is what uh, Nemanja really did well this turn. And uh, I like I like how Pontius is already thinking about the game plan for the game three. This is what players sometimes do if you wonder why he's not just standing in the Pokemon. He's taking his time to make sure that he got a game plan ready. Uh, and this is going to be interesting. I guess Pontius got... Uh, we, see, we do see, uh, actually, Kyogre from uh, Nemanja coming in and the Salamence. And this is going to be really interesting. I, I, I do think uh, Kyogre's usually can Ice Beam or Icy Wind. So that Salamence is threatened. And uh, Incineroar is still uh, locked into the Fake Out. So the ball position for Nemanja this time is like almost sealed up. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy right now, I think, for Nemanja. You've got the pressure of Kyogre to put over on the Salamence. He will have to reveal his item choice, though. Obviously, yeah. we know it's not the Blue Orb. Uh, caught me out, but I'm sure his opponent, Pontus, is a little, uh, little more on the ball about it and is immediately trying to get a, a good sense of yeah. what item it has. As, as you mentioned in the earlier series this season, it's always been one of the choice items. Choice Scarf, choice Specs. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've seen anyone brave enough to play a choice band yet, but we, we live in hope. Uh, to see if anyone wants to go for it. Salamence will Mega Evolve. Uh, but do you think it's going to make it through the turn, Sebi? Uh, it might protect us to scouts and moves. 
uh, just to see if Kyogre is faster or Rayquaza, but we do not see a Protect, and we see this is Choice of Kyogre taking out Salamence, and uh, both players already shaked hands. So this is probably the last turn of the match, and uh, Rayquaza goes for a Dragon Ascent into the Incineroar. Uh, oh, that's, a, that's a huge amount of damage, Adam. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good amount, and that's a you know a piece of information that yeah. Mania now gets for yeah. free. Um, but you know, Pontus literally extended his hand as soon as he saw the Kyogre move first. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's very interesting. He literally played that turn to decide if it was Choice Scarf or not. Yeah, and um, this, this this is like this this match was like all about information. We have seen that uh, Incineroar got the. Um, C move on it. We have seen uh, what kind of moves Axe Gore got, that Kyogre is Joyce Scarf. Uh, this was really interesting. We've seen uh, the Sea Crystal on uh, Greninja, which is really interesting. Uh, Sub Zero Slam, a really strong attack. Yeah, I mean, is there anything that you think Nemanja is really scared of that he wanted a Sub Zero Slammer for? Um, you know, is it the one question I'd, I'd love to ask him at some point is does Sub Zero Slammer negate the effects of? the wins is that an option will it will it get through is that a specific number that he's gone for um because it seems like a very specific choice right it actually is it, it, it's really it's really about uh i guess you wanna you want to uh hit salamence really hard and grass types uh both threaten kyoga especially a scarf kyoga a choice scarf kyoga and uh even if a salamence or a rayquaza protects sub-zero slammer does a really good amount of damage maybe enough to uh get the knockout afterwards with a full power water spout yeah i do like actually um, the thought of, you know, if you protect and you get Sub-Zero Slammered, uh, you still take a huge amount of damage. I think yeah. knowing that and being able to play to that is so important. And with a team like Nemanja's, you really yeah. don't have an off switch or a slow down switch or a let's defend for a couple turns option. You literally just have to be going every single turn, trying to pick up one knockout a turn, yeah. put down huge amounts of damage per turn, and really keep your opponent under pressure as you play the game. Yeah, and this is... What he really uh, was good at at the last game, and I'm really curious if he's going to stick with his game plan. Uh, Pontus maybe... It, it was really tough because turn one, if Pontus went for a Geomancy, the game would have been really hard for Nemanja to come back. And uh, if he uh, just tries to do this uh, in, the, in the third game, it might be over sooner than later. Uh, but I guess um, Nemanja is aware now that so, he has to take care of that. It's a good thing to pick up on though, why didn't he Geomancy? We do get to the opening of the game and they are actually in exactly the same position as they were. Um, and, you know, we're already looking at Axelgor, Greninja, staring down Xerneas, Incineroar. We were here last time, yep. and as you mentioned uh, just then, Xerneas didn't Geomancy. No. Do you think if he Geomancy's here, he gets an easier win? Um, he knows that he can take a Sub-Zero Slammer. Uh, so, why not Geomancy? Yeah, you're going to be low on health, yeah. but you're also going to have a Geomancy setup. <laughs> and you're going to be faster and do more damage. And again, we're going to, we're going to see the sub zero Lemma from Greninja probably going into the Xerneas. I don't want to take it away yet, but I'm pretty sure he's trying to get that. And uh, Nemanja knows that um, it's going to be hard if Pontus gets up a uh, Geomancy, but he's still got Rayquaza in the back, and uh, those used to run uh, extreme speed a lot, and we do actually see the Geomancy boosting Xerneas' uh, special defense, special attack, and speed. I'm interested to see if anything can uh, outpace it at this point. Yeah. I mean, the Nemanja's team is fast, uh, but the big thing here is, you know, the trade-off you usually make in Pokemon is if it's fast, it's frail. Yeah. And something like Excel Gore, as we saw, something like Greninja, they don't take these big hits well. They don't take these Dazzling Gleams uh, comfortably. Admittedly, there's not many things that can uh, in the format right now, but overall, you know, you've got to wonder, does Pontus just Dazzling Gleam for the rest of the game? Oh, he, he might do. He might do. He might... Uh, he knows that Nemanja has to start trading now. His uh, Axel Gore has to uh, stay in. I guess it doesn't run Protect. Most of them uh, only run offensive attacks or or helping attacks like Encore, and we do see the Dazzling Gleam coming up from uh, Xerneas going into Axel Gore. Greninja is protecting and taking Axel Gore out, 
and there is still Incinera on the line trying to U-turn out to get the fake up pressure in the back which is always helpful but it has to stay in thanks to the protect. Yeah, what, is the, what does the Mania have to do with the Xenius right now? Because I'm looking down his team sheet and I'm struggling to see that, that clear and concise answer. Something that can take the big hit and then immediately retaliate. It's going to yeah. be... It's going to be tough, I think. It's it's going to be really tough. That, Ra that Rayquaza surely has to uh, attack into the Xerneas slot, and uh, Greninja is pretty free to attack the Incineroar slot uh, with its threatening uh, water-type attacks. Uh, this is interesting because uh, we may or may not see a Mega Evolution, and Nemanja decides to go for the Mega Evolution. So if uh, Pontus is uh, going to stay in with Incineroar, which he obviously does. He got Crowdon in the back, he got the upper hand concerning the weather. Like, yep. Greninja is not going to score, score that Crowdon anywhere soon. Yeah, Xenius is scared of the extreme speed from Rayquaza. Uh, is a little bit concerned that it may be able to get the knockout from there, and the Ice Beam uh, will come out from Greninja. Just the regular Ice Beam, not a Sub-Zero Slammer today. Uh, but it will go into that Incineroar. Uh, not the most threatening place for it. A little bit of damage down there as uh, Incineroar does you turn out. And as you mentioned, uh, now we're onto those primal levels of weather. Uh, the Delta Stream, the Desolate Lands. Uh, that is going to be something they're going to have to actively compete with. It's not like Airlock. Before you Mega Evolve Rayquaza, you do have Airlock and you can say, well, I just I don't worry anymore. I'm not fussed. Yeah. Um, but, you know, now you have to be fussed. He's not showing us a ground on right now. He's just keeping it to the Salamence. And this is where uh, Pontus knows what Nemanja is trying to do, and now he can start shoveling those Intimidates with Salamence and Incineroar, and he got fake up pressure in the back. So this is uh, really interesting. He could even preserve the Xerneas for later on, even if he got the uh, Geomancy boost, yeah, just to shuffle those Intimidates. Uh, and there we go, we, we start seeing it. Incineroar yeah. comes in instead of Salamence, lowering the attack of the Rayquaza to not get the uh, Xerneas. KO'd by the extreme speed. Yeah, this has been a very smart play from Pontus. Uh, you've seen the way, the one win condition that Nemanja had, uh, which was using extreme speed to uh, try and pick up that Xerneas before it just kept dazzling and gleaming. Um, yeah. But with all the Intimidates being cycled, uh, it's certainly been a bit of an ask for it to, to attempt that. And Nemanja smartly switches it out. Uh, we are going to see, though, uh, it is pretty much going to be just big old dazzling gleams, I think, from here on out from Xerneas. Definitely, uh, and Nemanja is going for the Protect again to preserve the Greninja, which is a clever play. Uh, but he has to do that, I guess, one more time. Uh, I doubt that Dazzling Gleam is going to take out Kyogre. There we go. And now Nemanja is in a tough spot where he has to uh, save the Greninja on the one hand and uh, get the Rayquaza in safely, which is kind yeah, of interesting. His choice is, you know, save the Greninja or just let the Greninja go down and, and do what he tried to do in the end of game one. He does land another Protect, though. The audacity oh, of there it. there you go. <laughs> this is really interesting. Now Nemanja might be back in the game if he catches some switches later on. And we do see the Dazzling Gleam from Xerneas coming out, taking out the Kyogre probably. Uh, and now we s we are back in the same situation, Greninja Rayquaza, where uh, Xerneia still can protect freely. And uh, this is this is going to be really interesting. Maybe if he shuts down the Salamence in one uh, with one Ice Beam, this is what he probably is going for. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, I think it's interesting that Emmanuel's, uh let Pontus show him his strategy against yeah. this Rayquaza. He knows that he's going to cycle through. He's going to rotate. He's going to yeah. take it out, bring in Salamence. So he's going to take Salamence out the following turn, bring in Incineroar. So even if you do get the extreme speed to connect, it's going to be so, so weak. Um, we'll be here to see exactly uh, if Nemanja can capitalize on it. Uh, you're only going to get one Intimidate on it. If he goes to extreme speed now, he's going to be in a great position. If he protects, I think Pontus really hasn't given any wiggle room for Nemanja to get back in this game. Yeah. There it is. There it is. The Protect comes in, and Nemanja is probably going for a uh, Ice Beam into the Salamence slot to stop the Psyching. No, he's going oh. for a Hydro Pump. He just thought maybe that Incinero is going to U-turn out instead of uh, a straight switch, but that straight switch from Pontus was really good.
Yeah, and this happened earlier. You know, he ice beamed the Incineroar thinking it was going to become a Salamence, and now he's Hydro Pumped the Salamence thinking it would be an Incineroar. So, yeah. on the right track, just kind of at the wrong time, uh, figuring out when that's going to happen. And that's something that, you know, Pontus has played it perfectly. He's put himself yeah. in a position where he's had those Intimidates down. He knows these are Nemanja's last two, and he's just locking the game up for himself. He knows that at any point, he's going to land Dazzling Gleams. He's yeah. going to get this team over the line. And just making sure those Intimidates are cycled is important. This is Nemanja's one chance. Oh, oh. barely enough. Barely enough. So and close. Dazzling Gleam taking up both Pokemon. Good games, but I want to go back to the Hydro Pump move, which was actually like really clever to avoid getting faked up. Uh, yeah. he, he played for his outs, like uh, if if Salamence comes in, there is no fake out on the on the board, and if uh, Incineroar uh, stays in, he gets it. Uh, he gets the KO on the Incineroar slot, so that that was really good. But uh, yeah, extreme speed, barely enough. But Pontus taking it, round one. Our winner, Pontus Westerlund. But well, good luck for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, good luck to both our trainers. I'd like to see, obviously, Nemanja bounce back. And honestly, on the basis of that play, I think Pontus is, you know, starting his tournament outright. He yeah. knows exactly how to push everything over the line. Um, you know, seeing that win condition that basically said, okay, well, I can take an extreme speed on the condition that you've been intimidated twice is usually a bit of an ask. It's usually quite a lot to, to say that and establish that. Yeah. With Salamence and... Of course, the Incineroar, the classic Intimidator, um, you were able to do that. And in, in both instances that he did it, he then, first time, of course, he forced Nemanja to switch out. Yeah. By the time he bought it around second time, Nemanja didn't have the option.